Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I want to show you some miniatures that I printed out on the Bamboo Lab H2D to give you an idea of what you could come to expect if you decide to print minis on the Bamboo Lab H2D. And also, the way that I decided to print these, I wanted to take in mind the ease of use of 3D printers these days, especially when it comes to Bamboo Lab. And the expectation is all you do is you throw your model into the slicer, you change some settings if you need to, but for the most part, you send it right over to the printer and the printer is going to do a good job. And most of the time, that's exactly what happens. So I didn't want to fiddle around with a whole bunch of different intricate settings in order to get things looking just perfect. I want to keep this as simple as possible, which is why I stuck to the standard basic 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And for the profile, I used the highest quality Bamboo Lab provided profile that they have in the Bamboo Studio slicer. So that's at a 0.08 millimeter layer height, and it is the fine high quality setting. And for these miniatures, print it one at a time with that highest quality setting. It took about an hour and a half for roughly an hour and a half for all of these minis individually to be printed. All right, so first I wanna separate them into two different categories. The first three over here are supportless miniatures. They were created specifically to be used with FDM. And when you have supportless miniatures, they are going to be a bit squished in the way that they're designed so that there aren't any extreme overhangs or anything that would require you to use support. So they're gonna basically be a little bit like this. So they're gonna be more simple in the way that they're posed. They're gonna be a little bit more, I guess, stocky, chunky, if you will. But when you consider the use case for them and the way that you're printing them with FDM, then you're going to have to expect those shortcomings when you go for supportless miniatures. And I'll leave links to where I found all of these. Now we'll start off with this guy here, this soldier, this knight with a shield. And I think he looks pretty good. I especially like the shield. It's got this cross on it with like these feather decorations. I think that these came out looking pretty good. And they even have a dormant here on the base as well. This came with the base already attached. There's a little bit of rubble here, some rocks that he's holding the ax on and everything. And like I said, when you look at them, they're going to have that kind of, you know, my arms are smushed into my body kind of a look, but that's exactly what these types of miniatures have to do in order to be printed without supports and for the most part he came out clean with the slight exception of just a little bit under his um i'm not sure like his his waist cloth skirt armor thing that came out a little bit rough a little bit rough something that uh some sandpaper a little sanding stick or maybe even get like a little pair of snips and just kind of snip off the bits that are hanging down just slightly you get rid of that and then the rest of the model is still going to look pretty clean as far as layer lines go you are going to see them if you look for them with fdm it's just the way it is you can't get away with it you can reduce them if you use another nozzle like a 0.2 millimeter nozzle on its highest quality setting then you can you know help to minimize those layer lines but you know they're going to be around so if you don't want layer lines or if you just want to have the greatest chance of not ever having to see them, then you are going to want to go with resin 3D printing. But this is not a comparison between resin and FDM. This is just talking about FDM because resin is a whole nother world and not everyone can get into that for various reasons. So this is the first night. Let's move on to the second knight here. He's pretty much the same character. He just has a different pose. He's got the sword up in the air. And just like the first guy, I think that this model came out looking good. And he also kind of had that same kind of weirdness going on on his backside, um, almost like right in between his legs. Something that, you know, you'll have to clean up just a little bit. And I didn't do any cleanup on these. I didn't you know, blow dry them or take a heat gun to them to get rid of any stringing. I used deeply gray PLA for this. So just some affordable PLA that you grab on Amazon to print out these miniatures here. And, um, you know, for the most part, I think that he looks all right. And also just because you might have to do a little bit of cleanup 
if something doesn't come out perfect, it's not an indictment on the technology per se, because if you consider the other mediums of printing, let's say resin 3D printing, you still have in some cases, support marks that you'll have to sand off. There might be a little bit of supports left that you also have to just sort of snip off to make it cleaner. And then even if you go and you buy like some models that are in the store off the shelf that you have to put together with like sprue kits, for example, you have an exacto knife that you need to get in order to make sure that when you take it off the sprue, there's going to be a little bit of sprue left over and you got to just slice off that little bit left over and you got to try to get it as clean as you possibly can. So no matter what you do, whether it's going to be resin or FDM or just a sprue kit that you get for yourself, there is going to be just a little bit of cleanup every now and then, not anything crazy when you deal with those. Now, yeah, models that are just, you know, injection molded and they're all packaged and they come to, you know, those are going to have those kind of little imperfections like that. But when you want to get like your hands on with stuff that you print or things that you have to assemble yourself from the kit, then there's going to be a little bit of cleanup involved with those just the way that it's going to be. But what about some miniatures that uh, aren't made for FDM that you can print with FDM, but they are designed to just be printed with whatever. And it could make it so that you have to use a lot more supports in order to get them to print properly. So here's a couple from um, an example of that. This first one is from Galactic Armory of this uh, Royal Guard um, character from like Star Wars. And this, although it is a simple character a simple design you see like that here at the bottom of this cape and i did choose to only put supports on the build plate instead of just wherever the slicer wanted it to go so that it'll be like supports all on the character and stuff but at the very bottom of his robe here is that situation where i was saying earlier about how things got a little bit too gnarly and it ended up getting kind of stringy and kind of nasty right underneath the cape here that's the biggest imperfection on him and then Everything else, I think, turned out, you know, fine. Uh, looking at him on the back, since this is pretty much a flat surface on his back of his robe here, you can see, definitely see some layer lines there. They're not super, super obvious in the right light that you can see them in the shade. Not so much, but this is the Royal Guard. And then the figure I think that turned out the best is this bard here. And I printed him out the same way with the supports only being on the base. And I really like how this guy turned out. I like how his instruments still came out looking pretty clean. The expression on his face is still there. The little um, ruffles on his collar, those came out really good. The ears, very small, very pointy. Details on the hair. I think this is a really good example of what the HUD was able to do with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle on this guy because he has some very nice small details and he came out pretty clean for the most part just a little bit right above the boot here it's just a little bit of bunched filament that i can just clip off and snag off and it'll just be gone you'll never know it was there but if you're just using this as a stand-in for a tabletop game or like whatever i think it's going to look just fine and you didn't have to deal with any poison in order to get it done and it took like an hour and a half to print so these are like small miniatures, you know, I don't know the scale exactly, but let's just say 28, 32 millimeter. They're small. What about some figures that are still humanoid in nature, but are larger? Well, I've got some of those too. This really cool model here of these stormtroopers that are posed up like that iconic photo i think it's called lunch atop a skyscraper this photo that was taken a long time ago in new york during the construction of what is now known as the 30 rock building and uh, someone over on maker world recreated that scene and used stormtroopers for it now the thing about this is when i printed it out and this stand right here is something that's just separate that someone else created for this. But the stormtroopers themselves were printed with a 0 0.16 millimeter layer height. So not even the highest quality. This was on the balance quality setting and it took over 19 hours to print. 
and I printed these using the dual nozzles with black filament in one, white filament in the other, supports wherever the supports were going to be, and everything was printed on the build plate at the same time with the top half and the lower half of the stormtroopers' bodies being separate, and then I had to glue the top and the bottom together. But the whole point is for you to just take a look at these stormtroopers as they are with no post-processing, no paint, no nothing, just pure filament, and just getting a look at these guys at a larger scale than what these miniatures uh, are, and see how good they look. I think these guys came out looking really, really good. You can see the trademark swirling of uh, FDM printing on the tops of the helmets, just like you would get with you know helmets that you can actually wear. But their proportions turned out really good. I think the lines came out clean and you can definitely see the layer lines in them at certain points here and there. So you're not gonna fool yourself into thinking that this was a in injection molded piece that you buy straight up from the store. It definitely has the hallmarks of FDM printing there, but still it looks, it still looks really good, you know? And this is just one of those things that as long as you're not up on it with a macro lens or a magnifying glass is not much that you can complain about with these guys. I think they came out looking really, really good. And something like this that you put on a shelf is definitely going to grab some attention and it's going to, you know, get people's eyeballs on it and go like, man, where'd you get that from? You tell them that you 3D printed it and they are going to want to know more about it. And they're going to want you to print them out one of these as well. Now, one thing that I think some people might ask or some people might say is, yeah, the models look pretty cool when you look at them when they've just been printed with the filament, but once you put primer on them and then you want to paint them, that's when all the imperfections are going to come out. That's when it's just going to look the absolute worst. And here's the thing. Yeah, sure. The layer lines, as I said before, are going to be there because of the way that this printing technology works. But if this is what you have access to, if you don't want or can't deal with resin, then this is the downside of printing miniatures with FDM. Now, is it going to look absolutely terrible once you prime them and paint them? No, they're not. Are they going to look as good as resin once you prime them and paint them if you painted them the same way? No, there's going to be differences between them. The resin version is going to look better, but you just have to know what you're working with and the advantages of and disadvantages of the different mediums. All right. So as long as you're not hanging out with a bunch of like snobs who are going to be judging everything about your models, then you'll be fine with FDM if that's all that you have with you. Just as an example of that, here's something that I did a while ago of two models. They are the same model, but one was printed with resin and the other one was printed in filament. And you just kind of take a look at these and see like, okay, uh, which one is which? I'll give you a few seconds. So this one here is filament. And this one here is resin. And if you were in person and you were looking at these and you really want to see like, well, which one is which, you will definitely be able to tell that this one was made with filament. But when you're just kind of looking at it like this, when they're painted the exact same way, I mean, it's acceptable. I think that this one would be acceptable if this was sitting on a tabletop. I would be just fine with it as part of the terrain. If this one was sitting on the tabletop as part of the terrain, I would like this one too. I like this one better that's resin. I think that this one is overall better than this one, but this is not terrible. And I wouldn't be mad about that at all, considering how much more preparation and precaution went into creating this as opposed to creating this. That trade off in time and also material in this case um, can be worth it to uh, many people. So that's just a little comparison there. If you were concerned about priming and painting and layer lines and what they will look like, you kind of just take a look at these, which are larger than these figures here. 
and you'll be able to uh, get a sense of what that is going to be in the end. So that is it. I hope you found this to be informative in some way and whether or not you're going to be using a Bamboo Lab H2D to print miniatures or any other uh, FDM printer to print miniatures. Just know that especially these days, you can get some good results. All right. And as long as you're not hanging around with people who want to make you feel inferior because you have layer lines in your prints or or if you're not trying to win a contest of the of the best looking model with the most perfect paint and the most perfect everything, you're going to be fine with your FDM minis. All right. The most important thing is just having fun, using them for what you want to use them for and avoiding the ones who want to be overly judgmental about what you've created and what you've done, because what you have done is definitely good enough. So until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you soon.